Uh, dear judges and our competitors, we would like to present our project, the Donation of Refugee Movements. And uh, within this team, I had team members of uh, six people. Unfortunately, Joanna, she had to leave, so here we are, five of us. It's uh, Mario, uh, Andy, Edward, and Thomas. Uh, so to start with, we investigated the problem of visualizing and predicting refugee movements. Uh, in conflict regions. This is my PhD research topic, and uh, I was able to uh, get a code and pre predict the uh, numbers of populations. However, I didn't have a tool to visualize everything and uh, uh, how to actually can uh, map it as a network map. So motivation behind this is to visualize the flow and accurately predict the uh, refugee movements in order to save their lives as well as the government and the NGOs can conduct informed allocation of resources. So uh, to start with, yesterday we actually spent the evening to talk about, the, uh, about our structure and everything, and we've divided our work into three parts. The main part is the data acquisition, where I get the data from, and it's my input for my simulation that uh, generates the output of uh, refugees, where they go to the camps or throughout the country, how many people went to each city. And then I can actually take that output of CSV file and visualize it. So uh, we divided uh, all this work between us. Uh, Andy and Mario, they uh, concentrated on data acquisition uh, from Sorry, from three different uh, sources, and uh, Thomas as well as with Edwards, they can straight in the visualization part. So we have a, a repository which is you can find there. It's called Visual Fleet, and uh, it's publicly available uh, under the BSD uh, to Colos license. We were talking with each other and sharing all the related data and the, all the other files on the refugees Slack page. This is our plan. That's how we uh, saw uh, the end result. This we planned, like drawing and seeing. Okay, we're gonna have the timeline within which you can have the simulation period. This is the dots that we want to see within our model, and then all other key parameters. Now I want to pass to. So the, the data that come into it come from two sources. There's the uh, UN uh, High Commission for Refugees have a database. Uh, and previously, Diana had been using that sort of manually on the web, downloading data. There is actually an API for that, uh, but it's been updated recently, and the documentation refers to a previous API. Um, so I've created an R package that allows you to uh, download for a country, find out which camps are within that country, and then to be able to uh, download the number of people within the camps for the country. And that R package. Uh, it has its GitHub, uh, its own GitHub repository, and so that can be used now with like three lines of code from ARM to, to get those numbers. Uh, and I focus on the ARM conflict location and event data, which comes from a different website. I was going to use R, but it turns out that they, they have a simple API, uh, which is well, it's simple, but the documentation isn't great. So once I actually establish how to use it, uh, I managed to get the, the corresponding data from a single URL call which Diana can use in for later research. Uh, the third aspect is population, which we haven't covered, but it's uh, something that I have for the next uh, in the future. Now the third part is visualization. Then. So in terms of visualization, we wanted to use Python to display four different types of location on the map, and the size will change as a function of time, depending on the number of refugees in that location. Um, we originally planned to do the whole thing within Python, but as it turned out, Python's not great for having an interactive map as well as one that allows you to um, have a slider and then do dynamic kind of uh, evolution of the different parts of the map. So we actually used a mixed suite of tools uh, involving JavaScript, Python, uh, piping to CSV files, then eventually GeoJSON, and then importing that into the JavaScript applet, which is now available online. What's that, Thomas? And uh, some tests for our Python code too. So this is the, the visualization in JavaScript, which uses the popular leaflet.js mapping library. Uh, and as you can see, we have the uh, well three of the four different kinds of location here. So yellow cities, red conflict zones, and black refugee camps. You can see that as the conflict progresses, this is with simulated data. People are moving from the cities out to the, the refugee camps outside the country. Um, so we were, we were successful in, in 
this. Uh, we've put the link for this demo. We've got a, a version of it online that you can go to. That's in the Slack channel. And uh, in the future, I hope that other people can actually just download the C3 files with required uh, parameters and actually use this visualization tool for other uh, cases. So I will continue with this. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to make a conference paper with my collaborators. It's going to be named.